this computer. Ooh, that was loud. All right. <laughs> Aquia, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm always excited to talk with others in this sustainability space. Absolutely. Your mission statement, your vision for your work, there's so much that I feel like is aligned with my own mission as well. So I feel like we have a ton to talk about, but I also just love that I started following you on your Instagram account, I think back in like 2019, and you were working under a completely different name. Um, I think it was full by less, right? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And it was all about thrifting. Like, I know you'll probably share a little bit about that, yeah. but I just, it's been a fun journey to watch your, your business growth and your own vision evolve over this time. So as soon as I started this podcast, I was making like a bank of topics and speakers that I wanted to have on here. And you were definitely on there like right away. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Yeah. You, you really took me back to those beginning stages. Cause it's wild to think I've been doing this for five, about five years this year. Wow. Five years. Oh yeah. Because it's, it's 2022 now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's just dive right into that. I did fill in my listeners, a, just a brief bit in the episode introduction with like, um, an overview of who you are, what you do, but I would love to just hear from, you know, your own perspective, like whatever you want to share with us about yourself and your work and, uh, what you're passionate about. No, thank you so much. Of course, my name is Akuya Yamwa Poku, and I am a Florida native and Ghanaian American and big lover of dance and being outdoors and all that good stuff, but really just started this journey of low waste, minimalist living in 2017 because I was bored, <laughs> did no friends, was in a new city in Houston, and just found this world on Instagram and just felt so compelled to share with others, learn along the way. And it's really grown, as you mentioned, starting with Full by Less, where I was really focused on um, just kind of those simple sustainability tips, thrifting, um, having those con courageous conversations with your friends about the climate crisis and how to live more low waste. And now really just transitioning to focusing more on those bigger pictures and helping people use their spending habits to save the planet for lack of better words. <laughs> No, I think those are the perfect words because we, I mean, we both are all about that individual choices really do make a difference in the big picture. And especially when it comes to our shopping and our fashion, those purchases, you know, the, the corporations and fast fashion industry are not going to have any kind of motivation to change their ethics if the consumers aren't demanding it. So I definitely right. think there's a lot to be said there. Yeah, for sure. And it's really a, a mixture of, you know, they say individual action can't do anything. But at the end of the day, we drive the markets. We drive what these businesses are creating and putting out to the world. So if we're saying, hey, this is what we want, this is what we value, and we put our money behind it, it's going to change because <laughs> a business isn't going to make anything that isn't going to sell or doesn't have customers for it. Yeah, exactly. And so, okay, I have to like slow myself down here because I have, <laughs> I have so many questions related to the business that you created, but I also want to back up a little bit and just maybe talk a little bit more about your personal journey. Um, because, so you said that you are a, um, Ghanaian American or is it yeah. Ghanaian American? Ghanaian American. So both Ghanaian. of my parents are from Ghana and West Africa and okay. they moved to the States and then they raised my sisters and I here. And much of my upbringing with my parents both being from Ghana actually influenced a lot of my low waste journey. And a lot of it was my mom was so um, she cared about what she spent her money on and wasting things. Like my mom would always say when we were going out to a party or we were taking food, she's like, just take what you can get. You can always go back for more. Like she was just so adamant about like, don't just stuff your plate, you know, and then you can't finish it. 
And, you know, she was also the one that said, finish what's on your plate, whether you're a fool or not. So like, even just those little things, um, reusing bags, a lot of that started very like organically in my home with my parents. And then as I got older, language became more popular around the climate crisis. I started to change the language, but I was kind of always doing those things growing Mm. up. Yeah. And what was that like growing up? in you said mostly in Florida um Mm -hmm. so do you feel like that was something that you saw within like friends families like that was there any connection between the sustainable practices that were just coming natural to your family and then like what you grew up around I would say what my parents were doing was pretty common amongst like other African families and friends that we had and not so much with like my American friends. But it's funny because I had an instance once I realized what I was doing in my home wasn't (laughs) what others were doing. And we used to get Ziploc bags, but my mom would always wash them and reuse them. And we would keep them and use them again. And I was washing dishes at my aunt's house. And I said, oh, where do you put the plastic bags? And she was like, in the trash. And I was like, (laughs) oh. (laughs) Like it never even occurred to me like that people didn't keep them because we always kept them in my house and we always reused them. So it was just like little moments like that, that definitely showed like, this is what I was doing in my house, but not everyone else was doing that. But also that depending on where I was living, I felt like I had more support living a low waste lifestyle as well. Like I spent two years in Minnesota and in Minnesota, I felt like I had so much support from the city to be sustainable. There were composting bins everywhere. There was recycling bins. There was discussion about it in policy. Like it was just so much more forward facing. And so coming to Florida, back to Florida was actually a hard transition because I was so used to being able to like find a compost bin for instance, pretty easily in the Twin Cities and in Florida, we're just not there yet. (laughs) Oh, that is so hard. Yeah. I feel like Colorado is just starting to, you know, maybe within the past decade or less, you know, include those sustainable practices and make those things more accessible. But even still, a lot of it is based in Denver and not the outskirts of Colorado. Mm. So yeah, yeah, that are you seeing anything pop up in more areas where you're living, or do you feel like it's still focused in like just the big cities of Florida? I definitely think the big cities are always going to have the advantage, but I have seen more zero waste, slow waste stores pop up in the Tampa Bay area, which is really exciting. I know we have two, um, and I don't want to pronounce the name wrong, so I'm not, but I know we have two for sure, and they're in different parts of the city, which is also really exciting. Um, One's in downtown St. Pete, I believe, and the other one's in the Tampa Bay area, so at least they're in two cities, but I just feel like the fact that I can only name two makes me sad. Um, But I also know like Miami's been picking up a bit, um, but definitely absolutely room to grow. And I wish it was just more common, but it's just really not. Yeah, that's, I'm glad to hear that there's at least a start. And I feel like Mm -hmm. even, you know, compared to the way that you grew up and having that realization, I love that plastic bag story where it was like (laughs) so clear all of a sudden that, wait, a lot of people don't do this. But Mm -hmm. now my hope is that this next generation coming up might actually not feel like that. Like, I know that the way that I'm choosing to raise my child is much more focused around sustainable practices. And I think because it's becoming more mainstream, a lot of the families that I know are doing the same. So hopefully there won't be quite as big of a gap, but, uh, yeah, I wonder what was it like as you grew, you know, you continued to grow within your home and the sustainable practices you had noticing the differences that were around you. And then you mentioned something earlier about like, developing courageous conversations around climate change and what you wanted to speak up on. What was that process like? It, it's been uncomfortable, like an awkward dance. You just kind of have to go through if you say this is what you care about kind of thing. But it's funny because a lot of the things that I was doing growing up that I didn't necessarily put a name to it or I thought it was trendy 
is what I use to have those conversations with people. So for instance, when it came to sustainable fashion, growing up, I had always used my sister's clothes. Like I grew up on hand-me-downs. If it wasn't my sister, it was my cousin. And I used to literally call it like my cousin's um, collection, like the Jasmine collection, because I just <laughs> kept getting clothes from her. And that was so normal for me. So I used those moments to like have those conversations with people because they were just like, where is this all coming from? I actually got that a lot. Like, okay, queer, like this is new, <laughs> but funny enough, it really wasn't new. Like I've always done these things, but I was using different language. And so it was just having tremendous patience with people as I explained it to them and took the time to relate it to words and experiences they would understand and also having patience with myself that they're not going to just get this in five seconds. Like if you took a couple weeks or a couple months to learn it, they will probably take a couple weeks or a couple months to learn it. So just extending like patience and grace and understanding on both sides, I think was, has been huge for me having these co courageous conversations and then just getting comfortable with repeating myself. <laughs> that is just, it's just nonstop. Like, what do you do again? Why does this matter again? What store was that? Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you're like, look, I have an entire Instagram. Now I have an entire website that has all these resources. And even still, at least on my Instagram, I'm finding that I have to keep posting about the same thing with different words or different visuals over and mm -hmm. over and over because it really yeah. just like you need to hear something uh I know like there's a statistic yeah seven times before it actually sticks and right. man that patience piece can be so hard but it's also like the key to these conversations and change oh, yes yes and then remembering like we have to unlearn this like if I, if you're not hearing this for the first time, let's say you're 21 and you've been fed something for 21 years, like, you know, it, it's a process. And that's if you want to learn it too, right? Not like grudgingly kind of figuring out what this is about, seeing if it's for you, if you want to put the effort. So it's just like very much an awkward dance that you just have to fill your way through. And then like, eventually you start seeing like, okay, I got step one and two. Okay. I got the little turn here. Okay. I'm figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. A dance is like the perfect way to describe that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're not a trip and fall yes. flat on your face, <laughs> but then you get up and you're like, no one saw that. Let's go. <laughs> Another conversation. <laughs> That's exactly what I was picturing in my mind because I'm also not a dancer. Like that does not come easily to me. So it's like, oh, that's a great analogy to apply to this because we are going to trip, we are going to stumble, but it's all, you know, part of the dancing process. Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's see, I'm trying to figure out which question I want to go with next. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you would be willing to go into this with me. And if not, that is totally fine. Anything that I ask, if it's ever too personal, just let me know. But um, when your family and the culture in Ghana is like just already immersed in practicing sustainable practices, um, as you grew up, do you feel like the more trendy or mainstream it became, especially within like the mainstream white culture do you feel like you've had to have a lot of extra patience to explain to people that like these practices aren't new they're not like they're just not this new incredibly uh amazing epiphany that we've just had all of a sudden like there's a whole history and culture that is behind this or at least a lot of it right is there um do you feel like you've had to have a lot of patience with those types of conversations or have you gotten into that a lot? Funny enough, I've more of seen it happen and not necessarily had to have conversations about those particular things, but more so people understanding that, like, for instance, there's been leaders in sustainability that are Black, Indigenous, Hispanic, Asian, et cetera, that have been in these spaces, but they're not elevated. So more of having those conversations regularly or, you know, when people talk about, let's say, 
reusing plastic bags. Like at least in the black culture, we've reused plastic bags frontwards and backwards. Like <laughs> literally I've used plastic bags to make food before. I've used it for protective hairstyle processes for black hair. I've used it for trash bags. Like, you know, that's nothing new to the culture. And I think sometimes it just, you know, rubs people a little bit some type of way that are people of color when they make it sound new, when it's like, no, this has always been here um, kind of tone. But I see it tend to be more in like looking at people in leadership positions in the sustainability space that have mainly been spoken about in a white lens. And people um, tend to be like shocked that these people have been in these spaces. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that's even including myself, like as I'm learning, like, oh, I didn't know that she was in this space or he was in this space, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. And I think social media has, for the most part, become really helpful in that I feel like because we can be connected to more of the world than we would have before. So I feel like there was this long phase of basically just ignorance because you don't know what you don't know. But mm -hmm. now that we have access to following all of these different types of sustainability leaders, I think that it's really important to diversify who you're following and who you're listening to and learning from because we all can be learning from each other. Um, and I know on one of your, I think it was one of your Instagram reels. I saw at one point you talked about like part of why you started the AYO or AO business finder is because there, you were noticing a gap within the representation of black voices within the sustainability realm. Was that for the business you have now, or was that back when you like started five years ago? Honestly, it started five years ago, but it's blood into this new finder as well. Like I started my blog, not to only keep myself accountable, but because I felt like I wasn't seeing very many millennial women that were also relating to me as being African-American, that were living in Minnesota. Like most of the people were like in New York and like California. And I'm like, what about Minnesota? <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So that definitely influenced me wanting to start my blog. And then it further fueled me to do my finder because when I was starting on my journey, most of the businesses I was finding were owned by white men or white women. And that was it. Like, I, I had not at least encountered these other sustained businesses that were owned by Asians, Hispanics, et cetera. And so that fueled creating a space where they can all live and people can easily find them. I love that. That's fantastic. I, I was looking at your website again recently. Well, I'm going to it a lot these days, but <laughs> I was looking at it in preparation for this podcast and then your Instagram and, you know, just kind of like re-familiarizing myself with some of your specific mission statements. So um, I had written down like your vision for your brand, at least as of last year, you had said um, that you're, you're working toward a world where no barriers exist to a healthy planet. And then your specific mission statement is to transform newbies into self-sustaining healthy planet activists. So in that ideal world that you are like hoping we can all contribute toward creating, what does that look like for one? And then how does your business finder contribute to that vision? Yes. So the ideal world looks like if, you know, I have this moment where I decide, okay, I want to compost. I should have the ability to compost almost immediately, not have to go through different phone calls, websites, wait three weeks not have to pay for it. It is just there. And I can take the food I eat and put in the compost bin and it goes to where it needs to go to. Or if like um, me, for instance, when I started my journey, I wanted to support sustainable fashion only, but I didn't necessarily know enough sustainable businesses that met my needs and my fashion and body size, et cetera, to do that. But in this ideal world, you know the businesses that can support you and your sustainable fashion journey. They have different price ranges for wherever you're at and you can get them as quick as you get fast fashion right now. 
And that's the idea where it's really that ease to be able to live sustainably once you want to live sustainably. So that's really a big driver for the business finder is because so many people are saying, I didn't know. It took too long to find. I've saved um, a business here in an Instagram post and on a Pinterest board here and on my um, computer window still up, like just everywhere, you know, and it was very disoriented. And this business finder says, hey, I want to start my plant-based diet. And I want to know what businesses I can support that are sustainable, that are also BIPOC owned, go into the finder and you can do exactly that because it's designed with your values of sustainability in mind and wanting to support the BIPOC community. That is so amazing. I think the the time saver piece that you pointed out is going to be the driving factor for more people utilizing this, in my opinion, because I definitely ran into that problem before where like I wanted to support more sustainable businesses when I was choosing where I wanted to shop. A lot of what I'm buying these days is thrifted or secondhand, but when I need to buy something new, I want to make sure that I'm supporting a business that has ethics that I support and is run by people that I want to support and all of that. But yeah, like you said, when it comes to just tracking down businesses through Pinterest and Instagram, it's extremely overwhelming and it's not a good use of the time that we have that's like, you know, in between our busy lives. So, so you created this business finder and, um, I remember when you first put it out there, uh, I added you to like my, my partnership with that minimal life and the coaching that I do. And I want to say that that was in like 2020 or was that 2021? Those years are like blending together for blending me. Together. I believe it was 2021. Yeah. Okay. When, when it was a paid, um, so resource. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so then, um, recently, uh, and at the time of this recording, you know, we're in the beginning of 2022. So you have made the decision to open up the business finder as a free resource rather than a paid resource. So Mm -hmm. could you talk a little bit about like what prompted that and, and where you're at now? Yes. Well, really prompted that is I take moments to look at my vision, look at my mission. And I realized that I was breaching that and that I was actually creating a barrier for people being able to get this resource that I truly believe could transform their experience in terms of supporting sustainable businesses, not being stressed out, not being overwhelmed, et cetera. And so after a lot of consideration, I decided to make the business finder uh, open to the public free resource. And I really do want to say thank you so much to the people that supported me like you and doing that because honestly, without y'all's investments, I wouldn't been able to like open it up in the way that I have and also take it to the next level and upgrade it. As you can see now, it's so much more of a search engine experience that we're used to that's similar to like a Yelp kind of situation and really is there to help everybody that wants it to use their buying power to save the planet by supporting businesses that care about the planet. Yes, that is so exciting. It really just, I think it it flows with the vision that, like you said, you have set out to create and to fulfill. And so I know that that decision must have been um, very big, you know, just very thought consuming. Um, I'm sure it was a leap of faith in a lot of areas. And so, um, so I have two parts to this next question. The first Mm -hmm. is how can we continue to support you? Because obviously by using the business finder, we can support over 180, you know, BIPOC owned businesses. But my first part to this question is how could we continue to support you? And then The second part is just for anybody who is not familiar with this business finder yet, you know, I'll have all of that information linked in the episode description, but could you also walk us through like, what does it look like to use the business finder? Yes, absolutely. Um, To make the decision to make it open to the public was a difficult one and a big one. 
But now I'm using that to expose people to what they can do in their loneliness journey. And also really now creating opportunities where I help and support the BIPOC sustainable business owners that are highlighted on the finder. So now I've opened up a business owner community um, that I call the squad for short, <laughs> that is there to help BIPOC sustainable business owners, um, you know, stop stumbling at every step, building their sustainable business. It's there to help them feel prepared when business opportunities come or challenges come, making sure that they're informed and making sure that they have a community because it can get so lonely as you're going on this journey. And so that's now the new way that I'm like supporting people and their journey. So if people know about a sustainable business owner that's also by in the BIPOC community that is looking for support and resource like that, I would highly encourage them to check that, that program out and talk to me if they have any questions and things like that. And then also, as always, just letting people know about the Business Finder, encouraging them to check out the website, encouraging to follow uh, the Finder on social media, on Instagram and TikTok, AYO Business Finder are great places to start in terms of supporting. And that way you stay informed of what's coming up next and new opportunities to support there. Um, but then to your second question about like what the business finder is, it's really now even growing. It has about 210 businesses now on there. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. <laughs> it has businesses that are indigenous owned, black owned, Hispanic and Latinx owned and Asian owned on the platform. And really, you can just type in exactly what you're looking for, clothing, swimwear, and it pulls up those options for you. And you can also look for it by categories as well. If you're looking specifically for shoes, for instance, or specifically for jewelry and accessories. But the best part about this new update with the Business Finder, since it's now gone public to everyone to use for free, is that you can save favorites of businesses that you have. Like you can log in, create like a little profile and be able to save it and reference it. So it's more cohesive spot than like your Instagram, your Pinterest saved in different platforms. Oh my gosh, that is super exciting. I'm already thinking now about even just like for myself and my family and I'm like, okay, I've got birthdays coming up and you know, mm -hmm. other holidays. I'm like, I know where to go now so that I can actually create this profile of like saved items for, you know, myself or someone I think that, you know, they might like this. Um, right. And you have, so there's a lot of different like clothing and accessory options. Um, last time I was on it, I think I saw also like some home decor options. Mm -hmm. And then um, what are some of the other categories? Yeah, so we have jewelry and accessories, home decor, body and skincare, shoes, and food. Okay. Expanding to technology came, is coming up as well to the space. So it's about what six categories or so, but it's literally always growing. And the nice thing is on the website, I have new businesses added to the finder at the bottom. So you can always be able to see what's been updated, but the best way is to sign up for the email list. So you always know when new businesses are being added or when the new biz highlight is coming out where you get to hear me talk with the founders of these businesses and learn more about their mission, vision, and products and services that are here to help you. That's so great. I'm really, I'm very excited about this. <laughs> and I'm just happy that we get to share this conversation with everyone because I think everybody should be checking out this business finder. <laughs> that, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> um. So you, so you launched this within, you know, the 2021 year that's, mm -hmm. um, coming off of a really heavy year within 2020 as well. And within mm -hmm. the resurgence of the black lives matter movement, it's not like that ever went away, but there was definitely like a global level resurgence within 2020. Yes. Um, 
And if you have the bandwidth to expand on this, if not totally fine, but would you be willing to share about how the events of that year ended up um, impacting or influencing your business with the AYO Business Finder? Yes, no, I absolutely want to speak to this because not only did 2020 make me so angry, so disheartened that I had to sign up for kickboxing so I wouldn't end up in jail. (laughs) (laughs) It also inspired me to do this finder. Um, it, It was really the fuel because as I'm looking at my own personal journey, realizing that I'm not supporting as many Black businesses that I wanted to, and knowing others were searching for this as well, I wanted to create a place where people didn't have excuses because the reality is the the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others was always going on. But something about this one was a perfect storm with COVID-19, people being cooped up in their house. It was just like, boom, explosion, you know? And I was mad that it took this global pandemic and people losing their lives to do it, but also, you know, more focused on, okay, how do we make something beautiful out of this disaster, basically, that happened? And so... I began that journey of like when anyone would post a black sustainable business to follow, just save it. I was saving them, saving them. And then I realized as I'm getting on this journey, I'm getting closer to the end of the year. I'm like, this really shouldn't even just be about black individuals and empowering them and supporting them and sharing love. This should be for all people of color, Hispanic, Latinx, Asian, indigenous, especially as like Indigenous Day came up in October. So then I expanded. I started saving all those, researching those businesses and knew I got to the point where I was like, I have to get this out there because I know people don't know about this because I'm learning as much as I'm building this finder. And then I knew that 2021 was the year that I was going to share this with the world and even more so this year with it being open to everyone to use but it it was hands down the fuel that that created this finder that motivated me to finish this finder and get it out to everyone because the truth is the BIPOC community is often more influenced negatively by this climate crisis because of historical discrimination and systematic racism like it matters even more for our communities because our neighborhoods are built in potentially flood zones or put by, you know, power plants and oil rigs, et cetera. So I think it's more important than ever for people to, you know, continue to support the BIPOC community, especially black communities, and, you know, not to do performative support. We don't need that. I know with Black History Month coming up, people are gonna do that. They're gonna come out of the woodworks and say they're supporting Black this, this, and that, and then die off. And then what, the next in, um, ethnic group holiday probably would be Hispanic Heritage Month in September, October, then they're going to rise up again. You know, and it's more of like, this should be 365 days a year yep. where we're supporting all people. We're supporting Black, Asian, White, Hispanic. Everybody should get, you know, your access and support. And so I firmly believe that. And that's why I've created this business finder for people to be able to do that 365 days a year. 100%. And thank you for taking that on that. The fact that, like you said, it took a global level disaster and like awakening to then have a bunch of people coming around together to create something beautiful out of it. It's, it's really, really heartbreaking and beautiful at the same time. And I think that the amount of responsibility that you had to take on during that time to create this business finder as well, and to like educate people on these businesses. And then also like, why is there this importance to support them? Why do we need to be, um, supporting our BIPOC communities? Why are they um, being hurt 
more often than not by the climate crisis. Like that education is a lot to, um, to have to explain to people. And I think that there's thankfully, um, a really huge surge in different resources of education going around right now that I've seen, especially on social media. So, but you know, but we, those of us who have not been directly, um, a part of this community or impacted by the climate crisis in the same ways, like we need to take on that responsibility to do the learning for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I want to say thank you for the work that you've done, because that is not something that needs to be on your shoulders. And it's not something that like, I, I'm just sure that it, it weighs on you a lot of the time as well. So I want to be able to just say thank you for what you do. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And, you know, I had to have tough conversations with others that um, are part of the Black community that like, you don't have to do that. That's not your right. responsibility. And I agree. It, it's not my responsibility to do that, but I want to do that. I want to be a part of a solution. I want to be a part of sharing love. And this business finder is one of the ways that I'm able to do that. And being able to call people in, like that's been one of my biggest things. It's like, I'm not calling you out. The world called everyone out in 2020. <laughs> now I'm calling you in. I'm calling you in to take action and to use one of the most valuable resources you have, which is your money, to do exactly that. Mm. To do exactly that. And so I hope this is a nice way of me doing that to people. Oh, yeah. I wrote that down just now. I was like, you're calling people in, not calling people out. I think that that language difference, too, is just enough to hopefully pique people's interest or attention, you know, because I think that especially within a um, white culture that is often steeped in white fragility, we can, for one, easily be offended. Um, we can take offense to things that, uh, we actually don't need to, or we just don't understand like, what's the depth behind what was being said. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of feelings of being called out as an individual when really it's an entire system and an entire history that's being called out a lot of the time. But then, like you said, there is also a very big difference when there's a shift right now where a lot of people are being called in to join the work. They're not just being called out and then left alone. Like, okay, (laughs) what do I do now? Or how do I, you know, how do I fix this? I think we often jump to trying to fix our broken systems and problems, but we want it immediately. And like, that's just not possible. So if all of us can be joining together and listening and learning from each other and really like elevating the voices that we should be listening to as well, then, um, I think that that's going to make a huge difference in like the direction our history is headed. I agree with you, Katie. I mean, it's really, those are the key points that you've hit on. And I've noticed a lot of people take that approach of calling people out and then saying that like, that's not my job to educate you. Google is there. And yes, to some degree, that's 100% true. But I also feel like I can contribute to helping you. And that's what the business finder is there for, because it opens your mind. Like, I mean, starting just even 2019, I could not even name five (laughs) sustainable (laughs) businesses by people of color. And that's just the truth, you know, but now to be able to say in my brain, I have seen, looked through and captured 200 plus sustainable businesses owned by BIPOC individuals is awesome to me. It's freaking awesome. It is absolutely awesome. And I am really, I just keep saying it over and over, but I am really (laughs) excited that this tool is out there for people to access. And thank you for making it free as well. So that, you know, you're contributing to that vision of like, we're all striving towards a healthy planet and we're all striving towards supporting all people. And this just removes a barrier in order to access it. Right. Absolutely. Let's see. I think I'm going to skip one of my questions. Um, cause we basically already touched on that. Okay. I, how are you feeling by the way, before we, <laughs> I have one last question no, for you. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I, I could talk about this business finder all day. I can talk <laughs> about 
the importance of using your buying power all day, which is, you know, a, a language that people are not really using that much because, you know, we don't want to skew people to think to be a part of the sustainability movement, to be a person that starts living low waste, that you have to have the money to do it, right? Like that is far, far from the truth, you know? But really what it's about is like at the end of the day, we are people that need materials and we consume things. And no matter how low key you live, you gotta buy something eventually. You gotta use something eventually. And when those moments come, how can you be the most intentional you can possibly be with that? Like, how can you know, like, okay, my $20, my $100 is doing something that I agree with, that I align with, that's going to make my present future better. You know, it's really just looking into that more. And yes, I'm not going to lie. That's a little daunting sometimes, like to put all that weight (laughs) on your money. But the truth is, even if you haven't been putting the weight on your money like that, businesses have leaders Mm. have like just because you weren't doing doesn't mean it wasn't done but at least now you're more part of that process and I think that's what's so exciting it's like now I'm a part of that now when I buy like my stud earrings that I recently got from Lucille and Co it's like special because I know I support an Asian sustainable woman business or like when I recently got my Eco Dessa necklace from um I mean my eco queen necklace from eco dessa it was exciting because i knew i was supporting a black woman-owned sustainable business like it just hits differently you know Mm -hmm. and then all these are moments of being able to spark courageous conversations because if i'm wearing my necklace or wearing my earrings or i have my sustainable water bottle and someone asks oh where did you get that oh that's cute oh, thanks. I actually got it from, you know, and it just starts conversations so easily in a way that's not intimidating in a way that's not like, okay, there she goes, but it's more like, no, it's really cute. You should check it out. I go to the business partner. They got a whole bunch of other ones on there. And then, you know, you leave it there and you let people make that decision for themselves. Yes. Oh yeah. such a big yes to all of that. And I think it also contributes to kind of something that you and I are both passionate about too, is like a more minimalistic approach to our living as well, because that often tends to be low waste living. Um, but when you own things that like you've chosen to purchase this, you've chosen to own this and keep it rather than whatever you may have like decluttered before. Now, you're surrounding yourself with things that you truly care about and that truly have like a deep meaning within your life. And I think that that's really fun. And, you know, it's, it's got to affect the way that you live too. When like your home, your own clothing, what you're walking around in every single day is like speaking to you and, and filling you with joy and meaning. I think that's so important too. Yeah. And I think also when you do that, you're less inclined to just be buying stuff in your house to just buy stuff. Like you're just thinking more about your actions, which, you know, in return, people say living sustainably is expensive, but I would argue that you actually save a lot of money because you're not wasting your money on foolishness that you used to be wasting it on. And now you're investing it into something quality. You know, it's like, something where you were going to Forever 21 buying these $20 purses, but you bought like four of them, you know, (laughs) in one year, whereas you just buy that one quality bag that's like $100, but you wear the heck out of that bag. It takes up less space in your closet because it's one bag. Like all these benefits, it's a conversation starter. You're proud about it. You're excited about it. It shares your values. Like it just becomes so much more of um, a healthier relationship, I think too, with the things that we put in our lives. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree with you. I wonder if with this final question, I ask the same type of question to each speaker, just the wording has changed a little bit depending on like who I'm speaking with. But um, obviously utilizing the AYO, do you call it AYO or AO business finder? Uh, or is it both? <laughs> no, it's so funny you say that because I go back and forth, but we're okay. going to just call it AYO, Business Finder. Yes. Okay. And I keep me straight and honest. 
<laughs> I've just, for the past couple of years, I've been saying it both ways, like the entire time. So, um, but yeah, obviously shopping with the AYO business finder is an extremely important step that I think all of us should be taking. And so there's going to be all that information linked in the episode description, but For my final question, what would be your top one to three actionable steps that you would recommend for listeners to take that um, just jive with your vision of advocating for a healthier planet without barriers of accessibility? Yes. So the first thing I would encourage people to do is to work on your mindset and not have a limiting belief. So many people think, oh, once I get money, I can live sustainable. Once I save up this money, I can live sustainable. But in fact, there's a lot of free ways um, that you can live sustainable by having conversations, by doing trash audits, by seeing what you're spending your money on that can start you on that journey. So I'd highly encourage people to start there. Getting that that mindset right is going to be the foundation to you having a long-term low-waste lifestyle. And then I'd also encourage people to make sure that you're following people on social media that align with this lifestyle that you're trying to do and the way that they're doing it. You know, so I always encourage people to follow AYO Business Finder on my Instagram and my TikTok. And I share sustainability influencers that you all can follow that are BIPOC individuals, male and women, et cetera, that are doing incredible things in slow fashion and nonprofit work, et cetera. So making sure that you're surrounded and seeing things that make sense, that align and make the journey easier. And then I would also encourage you all to really look at your money and how you're spending it and where you want it to go. And getting the right resources to do that, which I firmly believe is the business finder. Because once you're in there, you know that's already aligned with your values. And so when you're starting that journey, before you've even clicked add to cart, before you've even searched anything, you're already in aligned with your values. Mm. I love it. And I think that all three of those tips that you just shared are they're accessible for everybody here and now, no matter where you're listening in from, you can work on those exact things and then it's going to benefit your future. And then in relation to that, it'll indirectly impact all the other people that you probably want to support the different business owners, you know, the communities that are most impacted by climate crisis, like all of this is so interconnected. So I'm so appreciative of your time today, Akuya, and that you just were able to share so much like wisdom and insight from your own personal experience. And then this incredible business tool that you've created. I think that you're just starting, you know, this is still the beginning of your journey and there's so much exciting adventure ahead. So I'm, I'm happy for you and I'm happy that you were here today. Thank you, Katie. I really appreciate your support over these years, asking me to be on here and talk about my story um, because I haven't talked about some of this stuff really, especially with like the Black Lives Matter resurgence in 2020 and how it's influenced what I'm sharing with everyone, what I've invested in over the last couple years. So I really appreciate it. And I hope that this helps someone feel like living a low waste lifestyle is doable and it's for them and that they have a space that they can play and you know that we can all do our part to save the planet and that we remain positive because we gotta we have to believe that it's possible I feel like to make it in the in the long game oh yeah you really have to otherwise the world can become a very very hopeless and sad place but looking for the helpers looking for the people who are lighting up the world I think is what keeps us going so Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. (laughs) I'm going to end the recording.